I've listened um, to the uh, very clear and passionate responses of persons who uh, believe in the program. I'd like to just spend a few minutes, as I, uh, if you don't mind, because I've lived this now for approximately a year from where I've been sitting. And we have, uh, you will find, uh, very readily supported the program. And I would like to give you a little bit of the history and the origins of how this all came to be. Sometime in February, uh, Mr. Goldstein came to me and said he would like to speak with me. I knew Mr. Goldstein uh, from the Diversity Committee. He mentioned that to you. Uh, and part of the process of the Diversity Committee was to encourage its members that if they had any concerns and issues of which they felt we were unaware, that they should be brought to our attention. I received many of them prior to Mr. Goldstein, who raised issues of bullying, raised issues of anti-black behavior, anti-Hispanic. We raised issues of gender issues and uh, racial issues and so on. So he came forward and said, I have a bunch of issues I would like to talk with you about that involve multiple high schools and a middle school. I said, fine. He raised a whole slew of issues that I brought then to our uh, principals. And as we were concluding, he said, I do have a major issue that I wish to bring to your attention. And that is that I am a member of the ACLU, and we have received over the last few months multiple complaints from persons of both the Jewish and the Christian communities who are uncomfortable with the choir uh, having performances only at one church. The concerns, he said, had two components. Number one, the content, and number two, the venue. He said the next program was in May. It was of concern to them, and that they asked that it be moved to an alternative place. I said I could not make that promise to him, nor would I. He said people were upset, and it's possible that they would consider litigation. I said, understood. We will review all those issues, and we did. So over the next two months, I and many others, including persons such as Linda Cummings, who was part of the arts education program, persons in our C&I division, and so on, reviewed the content of the program. How do we do that? We did an extensive review of statewide programs, of choral programs, including, for example, the Florida Music Teachers Association guidelines and what constitutes appropriate choirs and choir content. We looked at DOE issues. We looked at other places in the state, how they were conducting their uh, choirs and their choir programs. We looked at state competitions, for example, encouraged by the Florida Music Teachers Association. We wanted to find out where they were being held, for example, and we found out that there was a balance between church settings and secular settings. And I followed up then with doing an extensive reading of the constitutional law concerning music programs, especially at the high school level. And while the program indeed had a great deal of religious and sacred music to it, I concluded that the program was sufficiently diverse to effectuate a secular purpose and could be supported. Number two, the venue issue led me to an extensive constitutional review of the venue issues, including the issue that there was superior acoustics at Moorings Presbyterian because the claim was that Baron Collier High School acoustics were not very good. It was an aging physical plant. We were mindful of alternate venues uh, that were available for the district. And we were concerned as well about the multiple sensitivities. Nevertheless, I concluded that we ought to support the program and not give ground in May. And I wrote an extensive opinion letter to Mr. Peterson, uh, excuse me, to Mr. Goldstein, uh, and asked him to forward it along to the ACLU. Naturally, Mr. Goldstein was not happy. He's a good man, but it was a position that he felt we were wrong on. I respect that. Uh, and that was sent to the Miami office. Probably a lot of you don't know this. And I then received a call from one of their counsel 
who said to me that she would like to talk with me, and I've known her in the past, and she is a very good attorney. And I said, I felt our case law was on our side. And she said, I've read the cases, I know the cases, you have to understand, however, that there are alternative cases that can be applied if we'd ever pursue this, but I want, I'm calling you not to say we're pursuing anything. In fact, I'm calling to tell you that ACLU would not be pursuing any um, claim to try to halt the May program. She said, we're not interested in halting the program and we're not interested in disrupting your graduation period. And I said, well, I appreciate all that. And she said, I would like you to consider, and I believe you probably have had discussions about this, the possibility of alternative venues. ACLU will monitor this and believe it's very important that there be diversity of venues. I said, fair enough, and we'll take that under consideration. I've had multiple concerns that in litigation that the outcome is not always certain. I know our risks if this would ever go to trial. I will not present those risks because I want to defend the district if this should come about. But I want to make it clear that while everybody says the law is on my side, it's not always that easy. And so we tried to look at what would constitute a balance. We understood, for example, uh, an aging plant at Baron Collier. We understood that the uh, acoustics, for example, would be better at moorings. There's no question of that. But we also were aware that we at the district were blessed with state-of-the-art acoustics in two new high schools. In addition, during the summer months, um, I worked with Mr. Pardee, and I don't know if you know him. He was the director of musical programs at Palmetto Ridge. He's just a first-rate, honorable uh, man. And we look countywide at alternatives. And that meant uh, not only what we had locally, but also cost issues and so on, so that we then could hopefully effectuate uh, a balance that we would not then result in uh, extensive litigation. Now, let me explain what I mean by all that. I could probably say more, and I'm happy to talk with folks uh, later about it. But if this went to federal court, there would be three outcomes in my view. <clears throat> Number one, we could win. And the court could say, this is not an issue. The case law is supportive of this. And I've read all the cases, the Bachman cases, and so on. And by the way, I did send a letter uh, at his request to Mr. Peterson on May the 16th. He had the opinion letter, including the statement that we would make every reasonable effort to see if alternatives were available. Number two, a federal judge could say, I don't agree. And we're going to end this. That would end all possibility of church-based programs. And the third outcome, I thought, was our outcome. He could say, I like the idea that you have uh, tried to create a balance. And let me ex express what I mean. I could imagine being in federal court and a federal judge would turn to us and say, how long have you known about this? Quite a while. Are there alternative venues available? Yes, sir, there are. Well, what have you done about it? Haven't done anything. What do you mean you haven't done anything? So I would rather be on the side that says we have taken the position that we in good faith have tried to create a balance in which we could have multiple sensitivities be understood, honor the programming, honor the choir director who, regardless in my view, if he's going to have a performance, he's going to do it at the same quality, no matter what. It sounds to me, and I don't know Todd Peterson, that he stands for excellence in music. I don't see how that would change. And so the judge would say, I see that as a reasonable balance in which it has been fair-minded for all involved, and I will not allow an um, injunction to be had in this case. So the issues are quite complex. I'm mindful of the issue of costs, but there's also in any litigation uncertainties of outcome. Everybody knows that. There's also other issues, the emotional toll it takes on people, the time it takes, and certainly the cost issues. So our concern is to be supportive, but the reason for the balance are for the reasons I've articulated to you, not because we have not 
supported the program, indeed we have, and we were prepared to go to trial in May if that was going to happen and stand up for it. But with the opportunity of somebody saying we're not going to proceed with it, please consider this, it left open the opportunity to think the whole matter through and what I thought and communicated would be in the best interests of the district, hence the idea of the balance. I hope that at least gives you some understanding of what has gone on. Don't expect you to like it or some of you may dislike it, but at least you understand our perspective or at least what I've experienced and lived quite intensely from last February to obviously to the present. I respect all of you, you're good people, and you love your choir, that's great. I'm just asking you understand the big picture that what we're trying to do is to preserve uh, these um, venues. And how do I know that? Well, I've also had the opportunity after the press issue broke, after the 28th of October, of receiving a letter from Liberty Council. A lot of you support Liberty Council, and they're fine people. I know the attorneys at Liberty Council because we litigated against them on the issue of Bible distribution, and we reached a very fair compromise that has resulted in a very effective Religious Freedom Day. All of you know that. So it was no problem for me to call them up and say, I'm reading everywhere and in your letter that we're seeking to close down the issue of the church venue. I said, Horatio, that's not true. We're trying to create a balance and keep it open, at least for a couple of concerts in that setting. Response, I'm really glad to hear that. And so we ended in a very positive note. And as a courtesy, I also called the ACLU to let them know our position so there was no misunderstanding. And they know our position. And I saw no problem with trying to talk with both sides to let them know the things that were of concern, especially uh, at that time. So um, I don't want to be Madam Chair long-winded and, and take up too much time, but I felt that it was appropriate to give people a perspective uh, of what's happened over an almost year's worth of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fishbane.